Hello everyone. Uh, welcome to the part, my part, uh, for this Terra Summit, the second one in this year, 2022, as I remember. My name is Roland Chismazia. I originally come from Hungary, but I graduated at a university in Vienna, Austria, and I have joined the international faculty of my university uh, in 2012. The university that calls Kwangmun University as located in Seoul, South Korea. First and foremost, I want to express my gratitude towards the people who support and contribute to the success of Eurasia Research Center um, the success of the Terra Summit as well. In the era of COVID-19 pandemic, it would be nearly impossible to see uh, the work of other professors, to build a network of, with other professors um, from all over the world without such excellently organized events and conferences and summits. So please allow me to, uh, to uh, say to you, but also to the other contributors and presenters, uh, thank you really much. I shall start with uh, the topic uh, for today, and that is based on the development of higher education in South Korea and Seoul, but also my personal experience over the time uh, that is impacted by COVID-19. It's about the eroding quality of higher education, accelerated also by COVID-19 pandemic in South Korea. The pandemic caused challenges and revealed how fragile the higher education uh, in South Korea is. Um, knowledge provision uh, there is a problem with the knowledge provision in South Korea because uh, traditionally it is one way, so professors are talking to the students. Uh, but um, in that way, um, students are not uh, forced to become active and uh, their attention is drawn to somewhere else rather than on the class content itself. So two directional way would be necessary. Uh, uh, in that way, students could uh, either have a, a discussion with in the group or with the professor and him or herself. Um, so there is a necessary uh, necessity or a demand for a new way of teaching, but uh, in a um, in an environment where. Uh, such a necessity actually is not accepted at all from both of the stakeholders, so by uh, from the student side and from the professor side. Um, there is another issue uh, of the focusing on uh, very fast uh, uh, changing um, manner of uh, decision making. So uh, the education support team has asked uh, several times the instructors to change from uh, on-site to off, off, uh, offline classes etc etc um, and then the, there is a problem also with, uh, uh, with uh, uh, let's say uh, very with the point if international students would help uh, to maintain or even increase the uh, quality of, of teaching and uh, uh, that way how uh, the universities prepare now uh, to accept and to attract these uh, students. And also Korean students face a kind of paradox situation. They would like to at, uh, attend universities but they don't want to come to the classes. Uh, again, this is based on my experience where I teach actually freshmen. so. Uh, completely new students uh, who indeed have to adjust and adapt to the university life as well at the same time. Um, 
I will also talk about uh, the evaluating uh, of students' performance, so evaluation of students' performance. And uh, I mentioned just here, uh, really just briefly, uh, the shadow education, the problem with shadow education uh, academies or hack ones in Korean, um, because students indeed believe that they attend the university to graduate from there, and then they will go to academies to get the practical knowledge from there. Mm, this is not really good because uh, I myself teach uh, classes where uh, practical knowledge is provided. And uh, indeed, in that way, I would be more satisfied if my students would pay enough attention to the work of what they need to uh, carry out and do to get a, a favorable grade as well. Now, COVID-19 pandemic forced the universities worldwide to switch from face-to-face -face teaching to online remote teaching. The majority of students are dissatisfied as their college lives are completely ruined and they are not able to maintain their social networks, not to talk about building it up. Social Korean, uh, so South Korean um, higher education has long been troubled by decreasing tuition revenues as well, an aging problem and the low level internationalization of university education and administrative redundancies. And now the pandemic has greatly aggravated these structural defects. In South Korea, the successive governments uh, intervened in higher education to achieve a concentration of knowledge in renowned universities with outstanding research performance. This meant the shift from all the other universities and uh, universities in rural areas compared to shut down, reduce their departments or in best case, uh, merge with institutions of higher education. The problems generated by the worldwide uh, COVID-19 pandemic has not only accelerated the transition process, but also eliminated other problems and confirmed that the internationalization of universities, and now I mean like the uh, <clears throat> inviting foreign uh, professors and research staff um, is still fragile. Even countries with uh, um, well-established international hubs of higher education have been negatively affected by a sudden drop in the number of uh, foreign students. Just to mention, Australia uh, uh, was hit by a drop of about 50% of uh, decre uh, in the <clears throat> of decreasing numbers of uh, foreign students. Now, the development of South Korean higher education uh, has been, as I mentioned, also consider considerably influenced by the policies of the governments, which often lack continuity. So here is the pr problem, which already influences the quality of education. The various administrations have often attempted to respond to societal and environmental changes through quick fixes rather than taking strategic approach. As we know, such quick fixes were prone to create redundancies and inefficiencies within the educational bureaucracy and the projects launched by the previous administration were frequently cancelled or significantly modified, making the people who contributed to these um, projects less motivated and uh, cha uh, change their job. This kind of environment, together with the low level of in, uh, internationalization in higher education 
is highly unfavorable to maintain or even to uh, increase the level of teaching and studying in Korea. The lack of clear differentiation of activities of faculty members influences the quality of education negatively. Faculty members <clears throat> must excel in several fields. Unfortunately, there is a little separation between research and uh, teaching staff at universities. Each college or department should decide whether it should concentrate on improving the quality of uh, teaching or on enhancing the faculty's research performance. Professors are also uh, needed to present their voluntary service for which they can obtain the necessary points through participation in various meetings and activities related to promoting the workplace. South Korean higher education is also characterized by increasing financial pressure on universities. So there is a, a tuition fee freeze, which, is, which has been in force since 2011. And therefore universities actually attempt to ask a uh, request high, uh, for higher education fees from foreign students, uh, which um, perhaps is not a good idea as well. Now, internationalization of uh, South Korean higher education coincided with the problem of, posed by the increasing aging of population. Therefore, uh, many universities um, pursued an ac uh, aggressive recruitment uh, approach, uh, so aggressive recruitment of international students. The easing uh, of re uh, restrictive policies related to the employment of foreign students encouraged the misuse of the system. Uh, that means now we have more uh, international students who come to uh, more and more international students who come to Korea uh, to work uh, and at the same time to study. But for example, in my case, I have seen that a few of my students um, were more into work than <laughs> into a study um, and at the same time my university so the university I work for uh, introduced a new method of uh, accommodating foreign students by using um, teaching materials uh, written or in their native languages, which I uh, completely oppose because students who come from abroad should be able to use uh, the Korean language uh, uh, well enough to learn at universities if they would like to uh, graduate at universities in South Korea. The South Korean government announced uh, the use of modern online classes and uh, online lectures as buzzwords, whereas indeed it was uh, already a long time ago implemented in many other countries. So why the most renowned international higher education hubs have uh, gravely suffered from the sudden decrease in a uh, number of international students? Um, the South Korean central government together with the local authorities introduced regulations to uh, help the influx so in, uh, uh, of uh, foreign students and to mitigate the impact of uh, on xenophobia uh, so one of the group uh, which is protected by the uh, laws is the uh, group of international students in Korea. Um, 
I come to the topic of uh, cost content related regulations and the cost content itself. I analyzed uh, the guidelines and regulations of a few selected universities, Korea University, uh, Dongdok, Women's University and Kwangun University. Um, the Minister of Education failed to provide detailed and specific guidelines on ed uh, online education. So uh, universities adopted and uh, uh, introduced their own regulations. The only common element that could be observed is the implementation of real time and recorded content creation. The responsibility for the actualization of content creation was passed on to the instructors without any detailed information about the preferred nature of content. So the materials of course content could be selected more or less freely. Although the individual instructor's autonomy to select teaching method became constrained. During the first semester of 2020, instructors received updates in very irregular but very frequent manner as well. Courses were expected to be held online and in a face-to-face -face form at the same time. Then uh, one week was an online week, the other week was an offline week. And this concept was rejected by the majority of the instructors. And then in 2021st, uh, my university set uh, the goal to have or a content, uh, the minimum content recorded or uh, live so 25 minutes per credit per week and the, the average undergraduate course content must have taken at least 75 minutes uh, originally the length of face-to-face -face classes of, uh, without uh, COVID was like twice 20, uh, 75 minutes long and this was changed and halved but one should also take in consideration the length of preparation and the recording time itself uh, since uh, professors were not trained um, and had no incentives to get trained to create online classes um, we can actually uh, guess what quality the classes were, uh, um, um, I mean, in what quality the uh, classes uh, came uh, online and uh, what quality the recordings also had. In the second semester, these regulations were modified in such a way that the minimum recorded content had to be 75 minutes long and the session of at least 30 minutes uh, designed to interact with the students was added to the uh, lectures. Nevertheless, this has never been scrutinized as the information changed again and again over the time. The university administration checked only the length of recorded classes. And many instructors compensated the sh uh, for the shortage by means of additional real-time lecture time. The university claimed that they could not monitor these aspects of online uh, education and therefore advised the instructors to comply with the frequently changing regulations. Many instructors were no longer uh, able to fully comply with the regulations introduced by the education support team at Kwangun University. After the implementation of these regulations, neither instructors nor uh, students knew which course would be taught uh, when online or offline on any given week. In response to their complaint, the regulations were changed in such a way that each week 
online and off, uh, on-site lecturing methods were implemented in 2021. So every week, let's say, if the uh, professor and the students should have met Mondays and Wednesdays, then Monday classes were online and Wednesday classes were offline or vice versa. So the university administration um, requested professors to renew recorded contents. And um, if the instructor created the content during uh, the first two semesters of 2020, then only a, a certain part of this content could be used uh, during the next academic year. This restriction further lengthened the interest, uh, instructor's working time for which they were never compensated by the university. In 2021, many instructors wondered why the university reimposed the regulations uh, that only lectures attended by over 50 students were to be taught completely online if this regulation had to be cancelled, so con uh, cancelled uh, right after uh, its first introduction in the second semester of 2020. During the first semester of 2021, there was an attempt to introduce face-to-face -face teaching for half of the courses, that is, for the classes attended by less than 30 students. We also need to mention that uh, <clears throat> many of the scholars, so for example, Zeng et al. and Watermeyer pointed out that teachers did not necessarily have the appropriate skills to be able to suddenly and easily switch from face-to-face -face education to online teaching. So the quality of their teaching has rapidly decreased in that way. Also, Hodges et al. Um, explained that a temporary shift to a new teaching method under crisis circumstances cannot be compared to a well-planned and well-designed remote online education system, let alone to face-to-face -face learning. We know that the South Korean citizens are technically well uh, equipped. Uh, still, um, the technical challenges of online education might force some senior teachers to uh, opt for early retirement or some other form of employment. Their departure is bound to cause a loss of organizational experience because they leave their universities before transferring their organizational knowledge to the newly appointed instructors. If they do not leave the education system, then their limited uh, technical uh, and technological abilities and low self-esteem is likely to hinder them in producing high quality con contents and to produce an adverse effect on their psychological, on their own psychological well-being as well. In turn, their unsatisfactory performance generates increasing dissatisfaction among their students. It can be observed that the quality of education or quality of knowledge assessment actually decreases in tandem with the declining quality of education. Although the technologies aimed at providing teaching and learning have been developed for years, the assessment dimension is still very much underdeveloped as described by Tims et al. So both students and faculty members are uncertain about the procedures to be used to evaluate the assessment and projects. As a university administrations provided guidelines for conducting face-to-face -face midterm and final examinations, most instructors opted for real-time online assessment presentations of final term papers or even to quizzes. 
consequently, many instructors have to cope with an increased workload as the regular uh, uh, evaluations are combined with the number of quizzes, reports, and recorded presentations. To overcome these problems, Sanderson et al. suggested that instructors should pursue continuous evaluation throughout the semester in order to ensure that the objectivity is there uh, in, in case of their assessment to prevent cheating and plagiarism. Another preferable alternative is the so-called open book online examination, yet uh, it is highly probable that such an approach will lead to decreasing quality of assessment or even education. Uh, let me turn to, uh, to my own experience uh, now as well. Um, so in South Korea, the education is part of the service industry. Um, we are providers of knowledge for the money that the, uh, the university administration actually obtains and distributes as different kind of expenditure. But, but are we having any incentives to any of the stakeholders? Do we teach or do we entertain students? Actually, I agree to a certain level that we also have to entertain students to create a better or a friendly atmosphere uh, for quick knowledge acquisition. But I disagree with a few points and let me just highlight two of them. A large proportion of the evaluation is based or should be based on mere attendance of students. If not, students will evaluate professors very negatively. Two, the grading systems, absolute and relative, are uh, implemented. However, uh, most of the students would like to see um, grading due to absolute grading. The relative grading has some issues as well. Let's, let's talk about that. <clears throat> so let's come to uh, the first point, the attendance. Now, uh, because attendance takes a large portion of the evaluation, students will attend classes, but they don't pay attention at all. Students do uh, install on the computers uh, which they need to use during the classes, a chat program, uh, Kakao Talk, for example, and they use it with their friends. At the same time, pre-recorded contents, if they watch, they usually run it in background without understanding anything or paying actually attention to them. If there are live sessions, students do not show themselves. Uh, we can't really ask them to do that because of privacy issues. So uh, there might be no active participation. Now, if active participation is required, students will evaluate the professors again negatively. Working uh, during live session is also there. So basically, many of the students may work during the live sessions, so they can't really pay attention. Or they are traveling, so commuting uh, with subways. And according to my mind um, and my educational background, Attendance isn't part of the performance itself. Now about the grading. So absolute grading uh, is um, 
preferred by students, but relative grading is preferred by the system. Uh, due to relative grading, there is a diminishing motivation through wrong grading system or uh, due to wrong grading system. Um, here we can ask why should a student learn hard if the grade is based on proportional distribution like 30% of AA+, 40% of BB+, and the remaining uh, grades are distributed as they could. In a way of relative grading, students may form groups and may not study well enough for the exams. Rather, they would uh, consider, uh, consider themselves as um, a group of A and B or whatsoever. Whether it is the right way to learn or whether it is a challenging way to learn, I don't know. Maybe uh, my assumption is wrong. Maybe um, my uh, worries are not <clears throat> supported by facts which I doubt because uh, of the evaluation what I saw from my students are there and they are present but if you have any opposi uh, opposition uh, against those points which I just mentioned now please share with me and please share with the entire summit as well what I saw is this the following before COVID-19, my students understood why they have to do four quizzes within a semester. They studied also for the four quizzes and I never had to adjust the grade, uh, let's say, uh, that uh, from 20 points students could reach only 10 points so or everybody who got 10 points uh, should get then an a plus this problem i have never had the last semester it went so <laughs> badly that i had to face the situation that i also had to level up everybody because the uh, a few, because of uh, uh, except a few of the students, most of them did not reach the sufficient level to get an A or A+. Not only that, on the top, um, students complained a lot about it, why they have to do four quizzes. They also evaluated me very poorly so uh, the content is the same the level um, of uh, hardship is not changing but um, the acceptance level is decreasing rapidly um, and this leads to the situation where I believe that uh, students face a lower quality of teaching or lower quality of education or lower quality of assessment and also a problem of employment in the future. Thank you very much for your attention and I hope uh, to hear your um, comments on this topic. Thank you.